emotions play a huge part in our experience as humans, but they're also very, very complicated. I once heard someone say that most cultures nowadays are emotion phobic, but it doesn't have to be that way. And so I'm going to talk about three different ways that you can work to get more comfortable with your emotions that could really impact how you relate to them in your life. In general, in my work as a counselor, two of the most common things that I see are that people were either taught from an early age to suppress their emotions entirely, or to be very, very afraid of them always. Neither of which is really that healthy of an option. There is also a lot of language around how we should relate to our emotions, most of which I would say is civil at best. Things like, learn to control your emotions, or don't show weakness, or just be strong. All of those statements imply that we are at odds with our emotions, and they try and keep us from expressing them in a healthy, a healthy way. It doesn't have to be that way though. Our emotions are part of who we are as people. They are how we connect with each other, how we empathize, how we understand what it is like not just for me to experience something, but also for me to be able to sit with you while you experience something. And without our emotions, we couldn't do that. We wouldn't be able to connect as well and our lives would be so much less colorful. So how do we actually learn to get more comfortable with our emotions? I'm gonna give you three different things that you can work on if you want to get more comfortable with your emotions. The first is to spend time examining your bias towards your emotions. We all have some internal bias towards our emotions, especially the negative ones, and here are some of the more common ones that I see in the work that I do. There's the bias that sadness, fear, hurt, pain, even shame, are, are all just weakness and they should never be expressed. Or there's the belief that if we express any of those things, all we're gonna do is just push others away. And finally, there's the belief that these things aren't just weakness, but they are actually morally bad and, and they are something to be avoided or scorned. And a lot of the time when we hold these biases, we're not even aware of it because we were raised to think that way. And so it's important to spend some time examining what are the biases that I hold towards emotion? Maybe spend some time journaling, or maybe go try to get some therapy and talk about it with a therapist, or even just a trusted friend or family member. What's important is to allow yourself the space to actually question, what do I think about? What are my biases towards the emotions that I experience, positive or negative? The second thing to do is to practice mindfulness. Believe it or not, our brains and our bodies are very connected, and so when we're feeling a negative emotion strongly, usually we feel that physiologically in our bodies as well. And while it's good that our brains and our bodies are connected, one of the side effects of experiencing physically what we're feeling emotionally is that often our physical signs and symptoms will drown out what we're feeling emotionally and to take most of the attention. Because we don't like being or feeling uncomfortable, it doesn't feel good. And not only that, the squeaky wheel always gets the grease, and when I feel something physically, that seems like something I can tangibly work on, and so why not give it all my attention? One of the best things that we can do to work on shifting how we experience things physically when we're experiencing them emotionally is to practice mindfulness. This means practicing learning to be more aware of physically what's going on in our bodies and how that is connected to what we're experiencing emotionally. And that starts by becoming just more aware of what we're experiencing physically in any given moment. One of the exercises that I will often have people do to get started in that practice is to spend some time every day, maybe two or three minutes, getting comfortable with yourself sitting down, maybe on the floor, maybe on a chair, and focus on a specific area of your body. Maybe your feet. Notice, are they on the floor? What does the floor feel like? Wiggle your toes and allow yourself to notice what are the sensations that I have in my feet? What are things that I haven't noticed because I haven't ever spent any time thinking about my feet? And as you're doing this, also, your brain is going to try and distract you from this because our brains don't generally like to so solely focus on one part of our physical experience. And so notice, what are the thoughts that come to mind as I'm, as I'm wiggling my toes, as I'm feeling the floor? What are the feelings, the emotions that I'm beginning to kind of feel or experience? Is there discomfort? Is there something that's kind of pulling me away? And as you notice those things, allow yourself to kind of just see and observe them and then let them go. Notice, oh, here is a thought. I see it, I hear it, I acknowledge it, and I allow it to move on. And then I return back to noticing, what does this feel like in my feet? As silly as it might sound, allowing yourself to be mindfully present in a specific area of your body can help you be more comfortable in any given situation because you can be more aware of what you're actually feeling, both physically and emotionally. And also, you don't just have to limit this to your feet. As much as I use that as an example of somewhere to start, as you practice it, you can think about your hands, anywhere really. The choice is yours. The important thing to remember as you practice this is that there's no wrong way of doing this. It's more about allowing yourself to be present with yourself and not trying to control your experience, but instead trying to embrace whatever comes. And finally, number three, practice being comfortable in the state of discomfort. I know that probably sounds awful. 
and believe me, it can feel very awful sometimes, but it's so valuable to learn. One of the primary reasons that our emotions tend to get us in trouble is that when they create discomfort, we will go to extreme lengths to try and get out of that discomfort, whether it's digging a hole by things we say, taking an action that we just really regret, or even trying to avoid something that causes us to miss out on something we wish we hadn't missed. There are a lot of different things you can do to get better at being comfortable with discomfort, so I'm gonna give you three, a mental one, a physical one, and an emotional one. For the mental one, I want you to keep things in perspective. Remember that being uncomfortable, in general, when you're not in an actual life-threatening situation, being uncomfortable is not life-threatening, and therefore it is likely not something that you need to flee from. When you can keep that in mind, it can enable you to kind of calm some of that sense that you'll have of, I desperately need to get out of the situation I'm in. Then physically, some of the things that you can do are putting yourself in situations that are uncomfortable, but still safe, that will allow you to get comfortable being in an uncomfortable situation without responding drastically. For example, when you're in the shower, spend a little time with the water uncomfortably cold, or maybe try something new that you've never tried before, or when the weather's bad outside, go spend some time outside. All of these are things that we can physically do to allow ourselves to know and experience that being uncomfortable is not something that's actually like a bad thing. It's just uncomfortable. And finally, emotionally, allow yourself to spend time feeling what you feel. That means that when you have an experience in your day that you feel very strongly, you don't necessarily need to pause everything right then and there and feel it, but make sure that later in the day when you have a chance, go back to it. Notice, what, what did I feel there? Allow yourself to focus on that feeling and experience it. You don't have to spend a lot of time there, but allow yourself to spend the time that it takes to notice, this is what I felt, this is what it felt like, and this is how it affected me. The more that we practice actually being in the emotions that we experience, the easier it is to be comfortable with them and the easier it is to actually be present in our emotions instead of allowing our discomfort to kind of take over. With all of this, remember that getting comfortable with our emotions is a process. It takes time. You can't force it. So be gentle and patient with yourself. Being comfortable with our emotions really is a skill, and the more you practice it, the better you'll get at it, and that can have a huge impact on your life and on your relationships. And all of that starts by being willing to actually embrace some of what is uncomfortable with your emotions and head in that direction, instead of trying to move away from it. You've got this. And for now, that is all. I want to thank you for spending the time watching this video. If you enjoyed it, feel free to give it a big like, I would appreciate that, and maybe subscribe. But otherwise, I will see you next time. Bye.